With a wild center, this is Lunchtime Live. We're talking about nature and exciting wildlife. Encounters with otters and owls too. From Tupper Lake right to you. Learn about the plants and trees. There's so much to explore and see. Lunchtime Live, it's time to start the show. From the wild center, here we go. Hi and welcome to another edition of Lunchtime Live. Today is Monday, September 28th. My name is Nick, your host for Monday editions of Lunchtime Live. Today we are coming to you from the summit of Coney Mountain, about 10 miles away from the Wild Center. Uh, I'm going to turn the camera around and give you a little bit of stats about Coney Mountain. Coney Mountain is located right on the border of Hamilton and Franklin counties. You can actually see looking north, it's the waters of Tupper Lake. As we spin towards the west, getting a beautiful view of Horseshoe Lake Wild Forest, especially right now in the fall. There really isn't a better spot. It's bang for your buck uh, this time in the fall. So Coney Mountain is part of the Tupper Lake Hiking Triad. You may remember a few weeks ago, we went to the top of Mount Arab and talked a little bit about the Tupper Triad. It's a hiking challenge right here in Tupper Lake that includes Coney, Mount Arab, and Goodman Mountain. These are all really nice, real easy, quick, family-friendly hikes. So if you're looking to avoid some of the crowds in the High Peaks region, uh, this is a really nice alternative. Um, so you get here uh, at the intersections of Route 30 and 3 in Tupper Lake. If you continue down Route 30 south towards Long Lake, it's about 10 miles. You'll see that parking area. Um, the hike is, like I said, is pretty quick. It's only 0.9 miles. You're only gaining about 550 feet of elevation. Uh, we're actually currently sitting at 2,265 feet uh, of elevation. All right, let's head back into the naturalist cabinet, take a look at what's happening at the Wild Center this week. All right, welcome back to the naturalist cabinet. Let's take a look at what's happening at the Wild Center this week. As always, every day, guests of the Wild Center can see live animals in our outdoor viewing area from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. See everything from Cora the Common Raven to Stickley, our North American Porcupine. There will be Wild Center staff out there so be sure to get any questions that you may have answered also two times a day at 10 30 a.m and 1 30 p.m are our creature features those are happening in on the patio here at the wild center it's an opportunity to get up close and personal with one of the animal ambassadors that call the wild center home also happening every day at 1 p.m is your opportunity to canoe the racket river with a Wild Center naturalist and New York State guide. As a reminder, those canoe trips are happening every day until Indigenous Peoples Day, which is Monday, October 12th. So if you want an opportunity to canoe the Racket River, be sure you do that before October 12th. Right now is a great time to do it. The fall colors uh, are pretty stunning on the Racket River right now. As a reminder, every Wednesday from for the next two weeks is homeschool day. It's an opportunity for homeschool families and families with children learning at home this year uh, to come explore the Wild Center at a discounted price. You can get 50% off your entire, uh, all of your reservations using the coupon code HOMESCHOOL2020. As a reminder, those are the next two Wednesdays. You can get more information at wildcenter.org backslash homeschool dash days and we'll drop that link in the description as well. Also happening this week is the kickoff of the Wild Center's Youth Climate Program virtual event Youth Have Power. We had an opportunity to sit down with Aaron Griffin the Youth Climate Program Manager to talk Youth Have Power. Let's go check it out. 
Now welcome a very special guest to this edition of Lunchtime Live. We are joined by Aaron Griffin, the Wild Center's Youth Climate Program Manager. Aaron, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, of course. Aaron, let's talk a little bit about um, the Adirondack Youth Climate Summit and, and the history behind it. Yeah, so the Adirondack Youth Climate Summit has happened at the Wild Center every November for the past 11 years. This year, if we were able to do it in person, would have been the 12th annual Adirondack Youth Climate Summit. Um, so this is a two-day event where over 150 high schoolers come from across the region, across the state, to the Wild Center um, to learn about climate change, get inspired by other young people that are taking action on climate change, and then most importantly, create their own climate action plan that they take back to their school and communities. Sure. And obviously this year it looks a little different than it has in years past. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, Youth Have Power, the, the virtual event? Yeah, of course. So for many reasons, we cannot, you know, gather in large numbers at the Wild Center inside this year. Um, and we're really bummed about that. It's really sad. And so many of our student leaders that help us plan this every year are also, I mean, it's really sad to have to not be able to do that in person. So we're making the best of it. Um, and we have refigured the whole like idea of the summit into a new program this fall called Youth Have Power, Plugging Into Climate Action. So this is all virtual, of course, um, and it is open to student, high school students or middle school students, college students. We're really opening it up um, much more widely than we could with the summit because we're able to. Um, we're not really confined by the space, physical space of the museum. Um, so this is a three month menu of events and it's totally flexible. So you can choose which things you wanna to go to um, and which don't work for you. Um, there'll be really amazing speakers once a month. Um, and then there are some evening events that allow you to kind of connect, um, meet some of the other students involved um, and just like learn about climate change but in a more sort of like low pressure, like more fun atmosphere. Um, and yeah. then we have some weekend challenges too that allow you to get outside, get off the screen, um, and explore how your community is responding to climate change. Yeah, I think it's a really great alternative um, to, to doing it in person and really invites a lot more people in. Now, you mentioned the speaker series. It actually kicks off tomorrow, right? Tuesday, September 29th. Can you tell us who's going to be joining Youth Have Power? Yeah, of course. We're really excited. Um, so first, it's going to be kicked off by a few of the student leaders that have been helping us plan this. So we have about um, 12 high school students from the Tri Lakes area that are really committed. They would typically help plan the in-person summit and they're help planning th this virtual event too. Um, so they're going to be kicking off the summit. They've ma made some really awesome videos um, that they are excited to kick off the summit with and give it like a really fun um, like youth driven kind of more lighthearted feel. So definitely not your typical virtual event. Um, and then we're going to turn it over to two speakers. John Paul Mejia is the Sunrise Hub Coordinator in Miami. Um, he's an 18 year old climate activist um, and just speaks so eloquently and passionately about climate change. We're so excited to have him. And then we have Dr. Elizabeth Bagley, who is the director of Drawdown Learn. So if you haven't heard of Project Drawdown, it is a roadmap to how to reverse global warming with solutions that already exist. Um, so she is going to be talking to us about climate change solutions. So the two of them together, I think, is, are going to be like a really powerful combo. Um, and then we'll have time for a facilitated uh, Q&A after they speak. And in addition to that, before the talk, we actually have a youth meet and greet session. So if you just wanna pop in and meet some other young people that are joining, there'll be time to do that before. Um, and if you're a teacher, we actually have a teacher happy hour afterwards. So if you just wanna like kind of unwind, meet some other teachers and in a more like inf informal online space, we have opportunities for that tomorrow too. Great. And if people wanna join or get more information, where should they go? Yeah, so you, um, if you want to register for overall youth have power, like if you're like, I am in for the next three months and you want to sign up for the whole thing, um, we're so excited about that. So you can go to wildcenter.org slash youth have power um, and you can find the registration link there. 
if you just want to tune in for tonight and kind of get a sense of what that this is going to be like, um, it'll be streamed live on the Wild Center's uh, website and then also on our Facebook pages too. Great. And we will drop the links to both of those in the description here today so people can be sure to check those out. Well, Aaron, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, thank if you, Nick. Youth Have Power will be tuning in. All right, so if you're interested in that, be sure to check out the links in the description. Let's head back out to Coney to see the I Love New York Fall Foliage Report. Okay, here is your Fall Foliage Report, courtesy of I Love New York. We are in peak season officially. Uh, Tupper Lake and Mount Arab Spotters in Franklin County report that recent frosty nights have brought out the fall colors, which you're seeing, and the foliage change will be at least 55% this week. Some areas expect even greater change with leaves approaching near peak conditions. You're seeing that right now. We are just about at peak, if not there already. From I Love New York, look for above average shades of pineapple, buttercup, mahogany, copper, apricot, tangerine, plum, bittersweet, and ruby. Reports from Saranac Lake just to the east of here expect up to a 50% change with maples reaching rich red leaves, sugar maples displaying a variety of orange and red hues, birches beginning to turn. The long tour north should see about 20% Again, if you're looking for a family-friendly hike this fall, uh, I don't know that you could do much better than up here in Coney Mountain. Uh, be sure to check out everything that the Wild Center is doing, including all of our lunchtime live programs happening live at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on our Facebook page and our website, wildcenter.org slash lunchtime live. I'm going to head back into town, grab a cup of coffee and some washboard donuts. We'll see you later. Thanks again for tuning in.